I am tearing up. <laughs> it's just I about can't. screamed right now, <laughs> and I'm not even there. <laughs> now that's inspirational, Natalie. <laughs> I feel inspired today. <laughs> Part two I, of you this. Can, I could be here for another <laughs> no. hour. And then I was top of my class. Uh, there were only two of us, and the other guy was in the hospital. So uh, <laughs> here I am. <laughs> and I always go, he winds up homeless on the street, and it's my fault. Yeah, now you sound my wife. And you can get off. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Call the Google. Call the Google. Yeah. Call the Board of Control. Alexa, how did you get across? <laughs> Paul, I cut you off early. What were you going to say? What? <laughs> <laughs> Dang it. Don't do that to me, Paul. Don't do that to me, man. Thanks. I don't know what got into my head, but I thought, I thought this thought, you know, if I'm working year round, I might as well get paid year round. <laughs> Sweet Talk is a weekly 20 minute podcast brought to you by the Continuing Education and Workforce Training Division of Idaho State University's College of Technology. Find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and SoundCloud and subscribe today. Now, it's time to get started with Sweet Talk. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Sweet Talk, our weekly podcast here at Idaho State University's Continuing Education and Workforce T Training. As always, I am your co what are your co hosts, Paul Dickey, the video instruction manager and apprenticeship coordinator here at Sweet. And as always, joining me is the, uh, the other illustrious co host, Gary <laughs> Salazar, our director. Gary, how are you doing today? I'm feeling very illustrious. Thank you very much, Paul. You know, it's uh, it's always good to be here and joining us. And interestingly, you have a new design behind you. Kind of resembles the weather outside. It's cold and white out there. Yeah, it's 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 a very white background to uh, match the weather today. Uh, it's very snowy here in Idaho on uh, this uh, Thursday morning. Um, but uh, you know, it's it's not as cold as as it has been. Uh, but yeah. It's nice. It's nice. Yeah. Snow for the coming up Christmas holiday. Exactly right. And the more snow in some cases, the better, because that becomes water and we need water for all those crops we're going to grow in the summertime. Hey, <laughs> super. Hey, and, and joining us also is Angela, Angela Wilhelm, our marketing coordinator. Angela, welcome back. How are you today? I'm doing well today. I hope all of you are doing well um, also, we actually have a really special guest with us today. Today joining us, we have Victor Sklenka. Victor is a uh, tennis player on the Idaho State University mm -hmm. men's tennis team. So welcome, Victor. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Hey, everybody who's listening. So how Angie said, I'm Victor. Um, I'm an international student athlete here at Idaho State University. I'm majoring in exercise science and minoring in psychology. And um, yeah, I spend a lot of time on the tennis court. <laughs> so Victor, we know a little bit about you. We know you've traveled um, all, and lived all over the world. So can you talk to us a little bit about um, how you ended up playing tennis? So I played a lot of sports as a kid because my parents always like told me like, hey, do whatever you want. And like they even wanted me to play a lot of sports. So I just I'm not stuck with one. And I think thanks to that, I got that like athlete um, body and like, you know, I can do whatever I want when I picked it up. Um, so then all of a sudden I started to play tennis and I was like 14, 15, but I was playing I think at the time soccer. But then I liked the tennis a lot and I stopped playing soccer and start to play tennis like more often uh, per week. And then like by time of 15, 16, I started to play some national tournaments and it just went up from that point. People started to notice me because they never heard about me. And then all of a sudden some guy came and started winning tournaments. Like, who was this guy? And then it started all with offer to the National Tennis Center in, in Prague, in Czech Republic, um, where all the like best juniors and, and best pros are, are practicing. And that was a big step in my life for sure, because all of a sudden they wanted me to go there and practice with the best coaches in the country, best players in the country, and practice every day, which was something different for me, because before I was like twice, three times, maybe sometimes four times a week. 
but then they wanted me to go full time, um, become a tennis player, and yeah, that's how I that's how I started. Then it started with first international tournaments, traveling to so many countries in in this pretty world. Um, from Czech, I I had to play some tournaments in Africa where it's kind of easier, and since I didn't have any points, I had to. Uh, go somewhere where it's easier to, to gain some the, like the first points, which is the hardest all the time. Um, but that was great in Kenya. I was there three weeks for tournaments. Um, then um, uh, Egypt, then Tunisia, Algeria, Morocco. Uh, then I traveled after that when I got some points. I traveled in Europe. I traveled some in Asia. Um, G once in in. Um, Thailand and Japan, Korea, and then I wow. started to play some tournaments in US, which was um, the World Championship of Orange Bowl, which is in Florida by the end of the year. And that was also a big, big crucial point in my career since I uh, wanted to go to D1 uh, school in US to play tennis, to continue my education and also competing at the high level. So um, that was a big step to get into the tournament because there is just 128, I think, best players in the world, something like that. Um, and I got in and there were so many recruiter, recruiters from firm universities. And that's where I got the first contact from so many coaches because they went to see me playing and they liked my game. They liked my hard work on the court. I didn't give up one point to the opponent. So I think that's how I was caught up on, on their eyes. They, they liked my game style and my attitude probably. Um, then it just kept going the offers from, from colleges to come to, to play tennis here at the US. How so cool. Yeah. So I have another question for you, Victor. You've lived in other countries as well. Did you end up living in another country while you were playing tennis? And how did that work if you had to change coaches or uh, even cultures within tennis itself? Right. So I actually started playing tennis in South Korea. where I was there with my dad because of his work. Um, then I was in Czech for a couple of years, like three years. Um, and then I moved back. Uh, to be with my dad and I was in Colombia when I was 17. And that's when I was playing like the last year of the junior tournaments. And so I traveled a lot in South America, uh, Central America, and even some Caribbean countries and Puerto Rico, which is in the US. Um, so it was different because all of a sudden I was like closer to these states, which was different tournaments, different game styles in Europe, the Europe players, European players are more like aggressive, um, more coming to the net and stuff. And South American game style is more like grinding from the fence and just <laughs> not missing a ball all day. So many uh, South American players, they, they just have physique of, it's, it's unreal. Like some of the guys, they can play five, six hours a match and they are not tired. And it's tough to beat opponents like that. You have to be uh, tricky. You have to be smart about every shot. Um, and uh, you have to be fit. So so that was different tournaments, uh, the practices, because I all of a sudden I had to change coach. I had to change side that I was used to where I was training for the past three years. So, so Colombia, that was for a year in Bogota. And then uh, we moved to Brazil, to Sao Paulo, and I was there for another year and a half before coming to college. Um, that was also different, but it was better for me for sure because I played with a lot of great players in uh, tennis academy, and actually two of the guys that I was rooming with, and I was practicing with those two years ago. Uh, one of the guys like 120 in the world today, and the other one is like 300. So they they also went up because at the time we were playing, they were like very very great juniors, top 50 in the world, top 40. But uh, at the men's tennis uh, level, they were still maybe 1,000, 1,200, 1,500. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's an incredible journey, Victor. All that tennis everywhere in the world, you, you gained a lot of experience. 
you know, was there any one favorite place that you that you liked or this is where you, you, you felt like, hey, I'm standing out. I like where I'm here, like whether it was Bogota or the Caribbean or Czech. What did you like most? Does anything stand out? Um, so if you think for practice and living and just be with, with, uh, with the people, I, I really enjoyed my time in, uh, in Sao Paulo in the tennis academy because we had a lot of coaches uh, for tennis, for strength and conditioning. We had our um, psychologist, sport psychologist. Um, we had food on site. Uh, breakfast, uh, lunch, and dinner. So we didn't have to go anywhere. Um, I basically was like living there on in the academy f- through Monday to Friday, and I was doing my school there and everything. And then I just saw my dad and my family on the weekends. Hmm. So it was kind of like boarding school, if you can like say, <laughs> you know, like from from Monday to Friday being there and practicing. And and I like how we had a plan. We had like for every day there was a plan for example he said okay this group tomorrow 8 a.m gym for for yoga for for warm-up and 9 a.m tennis courts till 11 30 then gym to lift uh then lunch then two hours rest then tennis court to play some practice matches and then some running or fitness we had like a small sand area like a volleyball court so we're doing a lot of fitness in that Wow. Sent, which was tough and especially after all day um when when may when coach make us run there till till we almost throw up <laughs> because <laughs> we were exhausted wow yeah. and, and it almost sounds like the military <laughs> yeah, exactly no we were every day like four or five hours on the court two Oof. two hours in the gym and then uh and then at night or late afternoon we had recovery so we went to the we had three physios physiotherapists um we were taking care of us and we were kind of like the pro group which i was part in we were like eight guys and two girls that we were all playing like pro tournaments and we were on a high level competing and then there were like many many other kids maybe another 30 40 kids that were younger or even some kids that were like 16 17 but they didn't really compete they were more just like enjoying the academy Wow. Um, wow. That, that is, that is such an amazing care that they took care of you there in Sao, Sao Paulo. You know, what, what a great thing. I, I don't know how the different countries would do that, but that sounds amazing, a, a terrific experience for you. Can, I, I'd like, I'm curious, you were recruited pretty heavily. It looks like what brought you here to Idaho state university. So when I was recruited first time, um, I had probably 40 schools talking to me at the time mm. but then just about 12 if i'm correct uh, made an actual offer to me i was i was talking to all of them but then you know you have to hear it from the coach like an offer like uh, offer for for scholarship and um then i chose nebraska and i was there my freshman year of of college um, which was great experience in Nebraska, big school. Um, we had really great programs um, from from ice hockey all the way to volleyball and uh, tennis and soccer. Um, yeah, a lot of students. It was like 20,000 uh, students on campus. So, so great experience. The city is also big, Omaha. I think, I believe it's more than a million today. Mm. um so so i think i chose right because i really enjoyed the city and my friends and the campus but unfortunately it didn't work out for me uh tennis wise uh since i just didn't really click with the coach i didn't really um let's say i i didn't see the way he was training us and um i think he changed as well since he recruited me because it's tough to like say how 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 can how can the person be until you live with the person for a year. So when I was talking with him on Zoom on Skype for for half an hour when he was recruiting me, he seemed different person than after the year I spent with him as his player. Um, so that was a good experience that that not every time I can trust uh, 
trust somebody just on the first 20, 30 minutes that I'm talking to. Um, and also just great experience of how to uh, be tough when the times are tough because we really had tough times there. And uh, yeah, I mean, it speaks for itself because all freshmen besides one left from the school. Oh, they wow. just didn't like it. Um, my tennis teammates and unfortunately one of them uh, no, two of them, they're not even playing tennis anymore because just the coach made it so hard for them that uh, probably they just don't find the love for tennis anymore. And they were really mm -hmm. great players. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, uh, that's unfortunate. And so then you came here to Idaho State University? What um, made you choose well, this school? At the end of the semester, the spring, I, uh, I put myself in the transfer portal, which is for athletes just mm -hmm. the same as a NFL or whatever other professional sports. Um, basically, all the coaches from other universities, they can see the players that are there looking for a transfer, looking for a new school. Um, and then uh, I remember I got into the transfer school, I, into the transfer portal, and I didn't get any email till like seven hours later. Maybe it was uh, that they have to update it or something. And then all of a sudden I got, 30, 40 emails in the next hour. <laughs> it was it was crazy. I was like, what is happening? Like my phone is was like boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Uh, and I was like, what? What is that? And then I just see, hey, my name is this. I'm from coach from Georgia. I'm coach from Texas. I'm coach from this. And of course, it wasn't all D ones. Uh, some schools were trying to uh, give me full full scholarship to D two or uh, NIA. I think it was also one school. A lot of D two schools. They were like top 15. I think almost all of them that were top 15 offered me full scholarship. Mm. But then I sticked to my dream to play D1 because it is kind of different, D1 and D2 in, in athletics. And I was looking through through the schools. Some of them, D1s were not really good. Um, it was some of them that I beat as a player of, of Nebraska. Um, some of them I didn't even, never heard of. But they didn't really they didn't really had great program so then there was time for for calling all the coaches you know get to know them get to know their program get to know the campus where is the school uh what's their goals because for me it was important that i want to be part of the team who wants to win i don't really want to be part of the team that like oh, okay we just play tennis like uh we don't really care we don't put hard work in so so i was looking for that and it was it was harder than it sounds for for sure um then i all of, from all of the schools and totally was maybe 90 schools from which were mm. like just 35 40 schools were d1 i narrowed down to to the last five schools which was university of north florida montana uh, idaho state uh, lamar university and um uh, it was one school, Bellarmine, Bellarmine University, which was private with just like three, 4,000 students. And uh, then I was just looking for those mini details, which school is better than other. And the coach, the coaches from all of these universities were kind of the same page as me, which I liked. And then it was just to see like, how is the guys? Because my teammates here is like a family. It's like being mm. having eight brothers all of a sudden because we are <laughs> nine guys on the team. You spend every day with those guys. You spend hours in the gym. You spend hours on the court. You spend hours on the road when you're traveling. Uh, you spend hours at the night in the hotel or when the when the t times are tough after you lose a match as a, as a team and, and you have to be one there for, for another. And uh, it's it's really important to choose a good team because if you don't have a team that you enjoy being with, uh, then you can't survive those four years being at yeah, college. Yeah, for sure. yeah. What a great what a great uh, outcome for you then to have found a place where you wanted to come to. I'm so glad that you chose Idaho State University. I mean, I, I you got that real strong competitive spirit, Victor. Uh, you know, you're going to make a huge difference for for that team. It, it's really cool to, to have a chance to talk with you. Um, so you've been here for how long? I came now in August. In, in August. Fall, 22. Awesome. And, and, but Angela told me, Angela, didn't you say Victor somehow played at Wimbledon uh, previously? 
did. I was just about to ask him to talk a little bit about that. What an experience. What was that about? So um, my first time I was at Wimbledon, which was a Grand Slam. It was uh, when I was 17. And there were a couple people um, sick. I think it was, it was before COVID yet. And then I just, you know, you have the system when you sign into the tournaments. And I'm just looking like, what is happening? Like a lot of people pull up um, from, from the tournament. So I took my chance. I traveled down there to, to London and uh, I was able to play, which was super great, great experience. Uh, I stayed a couple more days, practiced with some pro, pro players that uh, they always looking for practice. Mm -hmm. which was even better for me. Uh, it was not just the <laughs> yeah. match, the atmosphere, but then I could practice with like guys that were 30 in the world, Ooh. 20 in the world. Some of them were 100, but it's still so good because they were like 25, 27, you know, some of them 22, but, but the pro tennis is way different than juniors. So so for me, it was an uh, eye-opening experience. Um, that's that's for sure. I, I enjoy my time. I enjoy my every second, I, I remember. Um, it was it was just great. It was it was like living a dream for sure. So Victor, um, you know, you're telling us a story. You've been playing tennis from such a young age, and you've gone through all these stages and playing in different countries. How do you keep your passion for it? I mean, since it's so part of part of your life, how does how do you keep passionate about playing ten tennis? So for me, uh, I'm saying it's a, it's a dream. It's a dream come true. It's a goal I want to achieve, or goals that I want to achieve in tennis. And I mean, if people, if whatever person in the world has a dream, I think there is no way to lose passion about it. You know, it's it's just it's just that one thing that always drives your mind crazy. Always you want to do it. And of course, tennis is uh, it's actually one of the hardest sports uh, in this world for sure it's physically draining it's mentally so tough uh it's uh to compete at the high level it's so tough because there is so many players and just few of them uh can make it to the top i mean uh there is probably just the first 200 uh, guys in the world that make money out of tennis and there is depression from from those guys who are not there and spending money, time, effort, energy, all all of that, and still not making it, just because of small details that can that can happen. So so for me, it's just trying to get better every day for for one percent, even if it's one percent every day better. I'm I'm glad in the end of the day, and um, for me, it's also going to every practice with specific goal. Because if I would just go practice because I'm going to practice, I will be bored after a couple of weeks. So it's for sure just uh, changing things up, um, having specific goals, uh, enjoy the process. That's, that's, the, that's one quote I always like to say to myself, enjoy the process. And uh, yeah, I mean, just dreaming, you know, just mm. keep dreaming in my head uh, what I want to achieve. Wow. So um, a lot of times I've never had a chance to ask any of the athletes, how do you balance, you know, the, you know, ha doing, you know, the, the sports, which is a, a, a lot of your time and a full academic calendar during the, the school year. How do you, how do you uh, uh, do that uh, uh, moving forward? So for me, my big help is my um, athletic advisor. Um, she's amazing. She helps to put uh, my schedule, uh, so it works with my practice schedule. Um, we always have to be students first and athletes second. Uh, but to be honest, for me, <laughs> uh, my practice is more important than school sometimes. <laughs> so um, sometimes, if I uh, would like to practice more, I would really skip maybe one class to, to go to practice. And of course, sometimes we're traveling on days that we have school. So sometimes we miss school, but there is some percentage that you can't go um, more than that. And yeah, I mean, it's tough. Um, it is just bouncing from, from the courts to the school, to the bed, to sleep, 
to some food courts to get some food uh, to study at some study lunch uh, court again the fitness gym yeah um, then friends family to that I, all I, that. I was I was just gonna ask you how, how do you manage to add some social life into your life <laughs> mm -hmm. so what we yeah. do actually we try to study together as an athlete uh, we go to the Starbucks here or we go to the um, uh, rendezvous uh, student student section student center where you can study and um, sometimes it's not really productive <laughs> but it's at <laughs> least fun <laughs> uh, to be there with uh, six seven friends in in the group on the table and just everybody's doing their stuff talking sometimes you can't really do anything because you're talking too much with others sometimes everybody's just quiet and doing their school stuff it's interesting, but at least we get to spend maybe some time together like that. Um, yeah, but it it's it's uh, it's sometimes it's really tough. Sometimes there is no time for for whatsoever something. Yeah, so yeah, uh, really yeah. You practice, Victor. You're so busy, but you're leaving out something's very important here. You're also working for Angela and helping her with some of our marketing material. So. Add that in as well. You you are a very very busy young man. My goodness. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, sometimes that's, it's tough. That's, that's hard to do, man. That is so hard to do. Hey, Angela, Paul, I don't know if you heard the timer, but no, you know, we're, no, oh, no, I'm sorry. No. So we're, we're so past I, this. I, I I got one. I got I got one more. I got I got one more. I got one more. Um. So um, Victor, you 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 told us about a, a lot of your travel um during your tennis career and that it brought you uh, all kinds of different countries and also the fact that you went to Nebraska and now you're here in Idaho. Um. Obviously, you have support of your family. Um to to for your chosen you know this this path um how do you i mean you must miss your family are they do, do you get to see them a lot how do you you know how do you uh connect with your family being so far away from them so actually for me it's hard because my dad lives in brazil um a lot of my family is in peru some families here in the us then my mom and my brother are in prague in czech republic um some of other family members are all, all the in some countries around the world really so it's tough to see all of them you know i will have yeah. to travel <laughs> whole year maybe to to, <laughs> to meet but uh, as it takes to my like close family my brother my mom i saw them this summer for for two three months uh, unfortunately i'm not gonna see them this winter break as i'm staying here in the us and my dad i also saw him for for a month uh, this summer um when i was in czech and he came to to visit and hopefully I can see them again next summer. So, I mean, it's it's as good as I can get uh, at least like a month per year for now. Um, and I mean, there is for sure, we're using a lot of WhatsApp. So we doing some video calls, mm -hmm. some chatting, like, hey, how are you? How was your day today? At least the texts that, hey, I'm like here um, and tell them I, I love them. So so it's it's hard, but... I'm so busy here that I can't even think about it, to be honest. <laughs> and the, to be honest as well, the time flies so fast because today is Thursday and tomorrow is the last day of school of this fall 22. And I, for me, the feeling is I came here three days ago. Wow. Okay. August oh, wow. was three it's days so ago compressed. for me. <laughs> because sometimes it feels so long and sometimes when you're at the end, you're like, oh my God, it, it just went so fast. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. Paul, thanks for asking that question. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and that was important to get in. You are, you are a very busy young man and we're very glad to have you here, Victor. Thank you so much. Angela, did you want to ask any last questions as you wrap this up? No, I'm just very, very happy that Victor uh, joined us on this podcast. I think it's really really nice when we have students come in because we get to hear about their background and their goals mm -hmm. um our job as uh, cpi supervisors is to help our students build on their resume um so it's re but for victor i mean the only thing we could do for his resume is get the entire company the entire department to play on 
one side of the tennis court with him <laughs> on the other. Because <laughs> yeah. I think that might be the only challenge he would get is if if there were like nine of us on one side playing against just him. But I'm just very, very happy he decided to join us and tell yes. everybody else about his experiences as well. So thank you, Victor. Yeah, so cool. Thank um, you very, thank very you much. Thank you for the invite. Yeah. You know, and... I, I, I'm, I, I am just exhausted <laughs> listening <laughs> about what everything he does. I, uh, I, I don't see how much, how he can put so much into, into every day. Um, really very, very impressive, Victor. Um, yeah, thank you so much for being on the podcast today. Right, thank right. Thank you again yeah. for the invite. So, so you did a super job, uh, you know, and and you're going to need a, a break after this thing. So maybe, maybe we can now uh, Im get uh, impose on Angela to to help us get you some free time. There might even be some food in it for you because <laughs> the calories you're burning, young man. Oh my gosh! <laughs> hey, Angela, do you want to help us wrap this up with Paul? Um, yes, we have run out of time. So again, thank you, Victor. Um, Paul, can you go ahead and um, this has actually been a great conversation, Victor. Paul, can you go ahead and wrap this up for us? Yes, yes, I will do my wrap up. Um, so anyone who wants to contact us, please email us at cetrain at isu.edu. You can visit our webpage at cetrain.edu dot isu.edu and you can call us here at the office to check about our programs at 208-282-3372 thank you so much for joining us today and everyone be safe out there oh and i i can't leave the show without saying this gary can't do this without you man hey yeah absolutely <laughs> all of you great and merry christmas and be safe everyone <laughs>